What's up guys, today I'm going to be building a hydraulic force gauge for my hydraulic press and I'm going to bring you along for the journey. I'm going to be using one of these short body rams that you can get at Harbor Freight for like 50 bucks. So this is the box that it comes in. Let's see. This is the 20 ton version and it's item number 95980. All right, so the first thing that we're going to have to do is take the cylinder out so we can measure the diameter. That's going to allow us to relate pressure in the system to a force that's being applied to it. So now we need to get the cylinder out. I forgot, this is a, this is a valve. I gotta take this off. Otherwise, we're pulling a suction when we try to bring that cylinder up. I knew that. It's so easy, the internet said. Just use a screw. Two point three six zero zero. Wow, pretty precise. Now we can put it back. So now that we know the diameter of the cylinder, we can calculate the area. Buy a spanner wrench for this. Don't be like me. Alright, next we're going to fill it with oil, but we need to make sure that the cylinder is at full length. Alright, so next you're going to want to put some hydraulic jack oil in it. I'm going to use this uh, SAE 20 weight oil. It's basically the same thing as hydraulic jack oil. And it's just what I have on hand. So there's a little hole down there and the oil takes some convincing to get it through the, uh, the little hole found just by putting my nozzle up to that little hole and trying to force it in so I'm having the most success but So I found it helps get the air out if you give it this kind of that kind of action right there. So you're probably waiting for me to tell you uh, how do you know when it's full? 
I don't know. I don't know how to do that. Well, seems to be working. Still see little air bubbles coming out of that every once in a while, so I think I'm just going to let that sit for a little while. Yeah. While we're waiting for all of the air to get out of the hydraulic cylinder, let's talk about gauges. Now, gauges come in a few different flavors, and you'll need a little bit of information when you're navigating them. They generally come in a lot of different sizes, anywhere from 2 inch all the way up to 6 or 8 inches. This is a 2.5 inch gauge and this is a 4 inch gauge. The next thing that you're going to want to pay attention to is the fitting on the gauge. The short body rams that they sell at Harbor Freight have a quarter inch NPT fitting. There's also a variety of locations that they'll place fittings on these gauges. This one has the fitting coming straight out the back, which I think is ideal for the short body rams. But you might not be able to find the right gauge with the right fitting for the right price. This gauge has the fitting on the bottom, so I hooked an elbow up to it. And that's another important point. This is not a quarter inch NPT elbow that you're going to go down to Home Depot and purchase. Those are made out of brass and they're not specced to hydraulic pressures. You want a high pressure hydraulic fitting. I got this one from Granger for about five bucks. You're gonna have trouble finding quarter inch NPT fittings that are specced up to 10,000 PSI, which is what you're gonna need if you wanna take advantage of the full capacity of this hydraulic ram. I suggest buying a gauge where you don't need a fitting. Getting an appropriate fitting can cost more than the gauge itself, so keep that in mind. You can buy these gauges, they go up to a variety of pressures. I bought my 10,000 PSI gauge with the fitting going out the back so I don't have to mess with finding any adapters. Now you can buy these gauges in a variety of pressures, but you don't ever want to overpressure a gauge. This is a 10,000 PSI gauge and can withstand any pressure that the hydraulic ram is capable of producing. However, you also have a fairly limited resolution with this gauge. I bought this gauge because it's a 4 inch gauge and only goes to 5000 PSI. This gauge is only good up to about 10 tons, but it's going to give me higher resolution in that range, which is why I purchased it. Ultimately, you're going to want to choose a gauge that gives you the most resolution for the pressures that you're going to be using. Now we already measured the diameter of the hydraulic ram, which is going to allow us to get the area. It was 2.36 inches, so we're going to divide that by 2, square it, and then multiply by pi. So the area of the ram is about 4.37 inches. Now that we know the area of the ram, we can calculate what gauge we'll need based on the application. So if you needed to measure 10,000 pounds, five tons, we would divide that by 4.37 inches, and that's 2,288 PSI. So a 3,000 PSI 4-inch gauge will probably give you the most resolution when measuring that load. I hope that makes sense.
Working with oil is not my favorite thing in the world. I'm gonna let that sit for a little while, allowing the oil to settle down into the fitting, which will push out any remaining air bubbles that are trapped in there. Okay, I'm reasonably convinced that the air is mostly settled out of the system, so I'm gonna add some Teflon tape and attach the gauge to the hydraulic cylinder. All right, here it is. So I've got it all cleaned up and ready to go. Now, the gauge is cocked a little bit to the right. I did that on purpose. And uh, let's see if it works. Oh shit. <clears throat> See that? Definitely has air in the system. Well, it works, but we have air in the system, so I've got to figure out what I want to do about that. Damn it. So right about now I'm realizing, shit, they know that I don't know what I'm doing. Alright, so I'm going to take this... I think what I'm going to do is take the cylinder out and then uh, and then I'll put some oil directly in the reservoir. Still probably going to have some air, but I don't know, maybe like not as much air. Let's see. This was a bad idea. Got a few little bubbles in there. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to loosen this gauge enough to where it'll purge oil while I push this cylinder down into the bore. And that should effectively get the air out of the system.
now I'm getting pressure on the gauge as we're tightening it. That's not good. Let me think. Alright, so I don't know what all I'm going to cut into this video. I'm sure you don't want to see me screwing on this gauge about 5,000 times. But what happened was, when I got all of the air out of the system, the gauge was starting to read positive pressure just by screwing it into the system. So I emptied out this elbow, and the system is just going to have that much air in it to kind of provide me a cushion of sorts uh, so I get a zero reading um, when it's not under any pressure. Jesus, does any of that even make sense? My God, I just want this done. Ugh. All right, let's see if this thing actually works. Minimum compression, very nice. Should put some safety glasses on. All right, so if we want to convert that to pounds, we'll go 2,500 PSI times 4.37 inches squared. Not bad for my old Colombian. By the way, if you're wondering what's in this bottle, it's this, uh, Zep heavy duty floor stripper. This stuff cuts through oil and grease like crazy. This stuff is awesome. been holding pressure for about 20 minutes so I think we're free of leaks alright guys that's gonna wrap it up for this video as I'm sure you could tell this is the first time that I've built one of these force gauges it didn't go quite as smoothly as I would have liked it to but we got there in the end so thanks for coming along with me during this journey if you liked this video you can let me know by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel I built this force gauge because I have some exciting video ideas that I want to use it on. So stay tuned for more content from Garage Geek. Thanks guys, stay safe.